Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Sarkis. I'm a faculty member at the Worcester Polytechnic Institute in the WPI Business School. And my area of work and research over the years has been in supply chain management, sustainability, performance measurement, and technology management, as an example. I'm giving this talk as um, a lecture, part of the lecture series for IESGA, the Global ESG Lecture Series um, from 2021. And I'm doing this during the middle of the COVID crisis. And the topic of my talk will be integrating ESG performance measurement for sustainable supply chain using blockchain technology. Although I have sustainable supply chains and blockchain technology in the title, Realistically, I'm also going to touch upon other digital technologies as well as general supply chain issues. And I hope you enjoy this uh, presentation I'm making. And what you see on the screen is some of my previous publications related to my topic. And of course, many of these publications include a high level of technology, information technology and digitalization issue, as well as performance measurement. We'll come back to some of these later when we discuss the relationship with ESG as well. So this is the agenda of my talk. First, I'll provide a little bit of background in terms of um, the interesting factors that cause supply chains to be a little bit different um, and a little bit about blockchain technology. And then I'll try to link, start linking up sustainable supply chain management and blockchain as well as other technologies in an overview of my discussion. And then the additional items that really relate to what this uh, lecture series is about is the relationship to ESG, environmental, social, and governance um, metrics for organization, and the links to sustainable supply chain, supply chains, blockchain technology, and digitalization. Now, when I talk a little bit about this, I'll give a little bit of background um, in terms of ESG uh, related to supply chains and um, digitalization. And what we will find is that there's very little actually. But I'll give you some uh, potential insights based on my background, deeper background in these other areas and its linkage to ESG, specifically from a performance measurement perspective. I'll also give a few different research directions and questions at the end before I take on any questions. So a little brief background on the introduction. Modern supply chains. Now, modern supply chains are becoming more complex. And as we've seen with the recent COVID crisis, they're very fragile in different ways that because they are global, um, they are geographically disjoint. And so if one portion of the supply chain breaks down, the resilience of the whole supply chain is called into question, for example. And this is part of the complexity, the various linkages that occur. Um, there's lots of inefficient transactions, and this is why we have supply chain managers to make the transactions and research as well, to make their transactions more um, efficient, uh, cost savings, time, delivery, a number of metrics that are typically used for business perspective. There's also fraud and pilferage occurring throughout these supply chains, counterfeit items. Also, one of the things that we found, at least from the COVID and previous to the COVID, is that traceability is a critical issue, not only from a business perspective, from but a broader sustainability perspective as well. You want to know that the products you're getting are real, are uh, safe, are uh, environmentally sound, for example. Also, there's a lot of cost involved in handling intermediaries because the complexity requires the intermediaries to make sure that there's a good way of um, managing the supply chain. So that's a very brief overview of supply chain management, the complexity structures. Now, to manage in this environment, um, you have information management um, concerns. Uh, a lot of the information technology that has been developed traditionally has relied on centralized systems um, and usually systems that don't necessarily talk to each other by different vendors and so on. Uh, they require significant trust, um, uh, especially when relying for relying on one organization for these systems um, and for the data that's in these systems. 
There's also typically because of the centralized nature, a single point of failure that can cause problems in the supply chain. Now to do address some of these issues in the more traditional information technology, new digitalization issues, uh, industry 4.0 topics, um, uh, have, a, have a very broader integrated, what I would consider multi-stakeholder technology perspective. And at a core of a lot of this is blockchain technology. And I also mentioned complementary technologies, which we'll touch upon in there, but blockchain will be the primary focus. Um, and complementary technologies, the internet of things, uh, cloud computing, which is sometimes interchanged with blockchain in different ways. Um, you have the uh, quantum computing as another example. So there is new emergent technologies and digitalizations uh, for supply chains as well as organizations are starting to emerge. So now let's go to blockchain technology. Well, first of all, blockchain technology first gained popularity as a platform. Many of you have heard of Bitcoin, the cyber currency that's um, been touted to replace uh, uh, the fiat currency, the traditional monies of nations. Of course, that's the promise and that's still probably a long way off right now. It's a lot of speculation associated with that. But essentially, this is one definition, blockchain technology is a centralized database of records or shared of all digital events that have been executed and shared among blockchain participating agents. That's the um, major type of definitions and most of what the researchers and practitioners understand blockchain. Although even that definition can be controversial, I will not go into different definitions and the controversies involved in it. I will provide one that we will work with. Now, some of the main characteristics and or capabilities of blockchain would include um, various aspects that give them ad advantages. Now, each of these aspects may be completed by a regular uh, digital technology, but the whole package is what really makes blockchain blockchain. You can have security systems that are not part of the decentralized ledger system, for example. Even digital, uh, decentralized ledger systems have security issues. But when you bring these all in, blockchain touts these as a package for the blockchain platform, decentralization, security, transparency, immutability and smart execution when we went through the literature these are the major characteristics of course i've also seen a number of other characteristics that have been included but these are ones that seem to be common um, characteristics and i'll stick with these although other characteristics also do exist so in one of our papers, the paper down here, Sabari, Hosida, Sarkis, and Shen, which appeared in 2019, one of the earlier versions of the blockchain and supply chain uh, papers that kind of set the stage for a significant amount of other work, we describe how a blockchain works. And essentially, um, a new transaction is requested with a new block, and that's part of the block, and the uh, block is broadcasted to every node in the blockchain and this is the decentralization characterization or capability of blockchain technology um, everybody um, sees it and a majority of nodes through uh, proof of work or stake uh, stake in of work or stake of um, uh, process can vote and determine whether or not the transaction is valid there's different ways of doing this, um, proof of ownership, proof of stake, whatever type of proof is necessary to do this. There's many, many evolving things, the whole area of research. But one of the clear things with the decentralization is everybody in the blockchain can see it. Then the block is added to a blockchain and that's where the chain of blocks is being put together. There's also security. Um, a copy of the ledger is made across all the members of the blockchain. So even if you did one group decides to change it, there's multiple copies of the ledger. So the security level becomes a little bit higher because then they can say, look at our ledger says this and your ledger has been changed or altered. Therefore you have like consensus mechanisms 
uh, to make sure that the data is, if it's changed in one ledger, doesn't necessarily change in other ledgers. Um, smart execution, not all blockchains have smart execution and smart contracts. Some blockchains do. Um, is, is the verification of a process and adding new transactions. And there's a series of rules and steps in this process to make sure that these um, uh, verifications exist. And some of these are automated uh, to make sure that once these steps are carried out, then bingo, that data is um, made immutable. Now we were talking about blockchains and there's a broad spectrum of them um, from open blockchains and public blockchains like um, Bitcoin, for example, is a public oriented blockchain system to permissioned enterprise blockchains. And these permissioned enterprise blockchains may only be used by known entities who are part of a consortium or a group of uh, blockchain users, such as supply chain network and their specific partners in there. So you can have a permission, private one or a public one. We are probably going to go with the permission one, but there's even some um, controversy over whether a private or permission blockchain is truly a blockchain. Uh, it's a, some purists say it's got to be public and it's got to have consensus and you got to have incentive systems. While others say, hey, look, we have the ideas here that can be applied in this situation. And some blockchain purists say, oh, what you're talking about when you're doing private or permission is um, a cloud computing. So there's a little variation, a little bit of uh, controversy over the actual definition of a blockchain. But again, as I mentioned earlier, we'll go with our definition here as an uh, initial one with the capabilities um, mentioned. So, how does it fit within the supply chain perspective? And this kind of sets the stage again for later on, we talk about performance measures and so on. Um, uh, the aspect is in the production context, transactions can highlight and detail at least five key product dimensions. This is how I've defined them. The nature of what you're doing, the activity, the product, the process, the quality of the system, how it is how much um, the quantity that's flowing through the system, whether it's transactions or whether it's individual products or whatever the quantity is that needs to be managed in these product dimensions or service dimensions as well, and ownership, who owns it at what time. And this is where the transactions and the ownership and the immutability all comes into play. And this is part of the supply chain. So broadly, a traditional supply chain, everybody has separate systems that talk to each other, usually a dyadic relationship. You have transportation. It's relatively a linear system. When, once it gets sent to the next, there might be feedback, but it needs to go feedback through multiple systems and so on. Now, a blockchain-based supply chain, the circle is you have visibility everywhere and you have access to data in all these different areas simultaneously. Um, you have smart contracts to organize it. And then what you have are standards organizations, registrars to help in this whole broad supply chain thing. And remember, these standards organizations and registrars and so on could come into play later when we're talking about performance measures. What should be gathered, especially from an ESG perspective? Now the question is, will these standards organizations for ESG, to integrate a little bit of that discussion right now, also involve those for disclosure for ESG. Who develops the standards? This is one of the um, core issues that may arise later. Uh, the information is visible to customers. So is, are you gonna make data visible to customers for this whole thing? And there's ownership changes and so on. So there's multiple activities, multiple players, um, all kinds of stakeholders, whether they're communities. And this is why we call it a multi-stakeholder technology. You have customers involved in it, they can see it. You have these organizations that set standards. You have government agencies that help in setting some of these uh, standards. You have these multiple partners within the supply chain. Um, so there's all types of uh, actors that can play a role here. Now, Let's shift the discussion over a little bit more towards the sustainability side, because I, I look at ESG, for me at least, um, 
to incorporate substantive sustainability metrics. So how does it do this? And this isn't necessarily the ESG portion of the talk because what I see missing here primarily is a lot of the G, although it can be integrated in some of the other dimensions as well. We'll get back to some of that a little bit later. Um, so sustainability, there's two major philosophies that exist. There's the interorganizational philosophy from the very famous uh, Brundtland Commission's definition. It's that is future generations. Today's generation should not up, use up resources compromising future generations ability to meet their needs. That's one definition of the sustainability. The other definition is the triple bottom line, which is very closely related to ESG, economic, environmental, social, people, planet, and profits. That's the standard definitions, just in case somebody starts asking, well, what do you mean by sustainable? Da, da, da. This is sustainable doesn't mean, um, you know, making sure your operations are running over a long time. It's more about the greening environmental social dimensions and aspects as well. Um, and now I've also written a paper. This is uh, 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 by Josida and Sarkis from 2018 related to where does the blockchain come into um, the sustainable supply chain and what aspects are supported um, can be supported with blockchain technology. And as we go through this uh, process here, you'll see it's an upstream, downstream process. You have vendors, you have uh, purchasing activities, production activities, outbound logistics. This is a standard um, supply chain context. But what I'll show here, and also closing the loop, I shouldn't forget that as well, the reverse logistics and closing the loop aspect of um, the diagram that makes it more sustainable. And this is part of what the circular economy, which is another topic that I can talk about as well, uh, which we won't go into detail, really gets into as well. Um, so what we have here is this supply chain model, which I'll show from and discuss from a sustainable sustainability perspective, but also show where some blockchains can be involved. And please do notice that a lot of these are areas where performance measures, metrics can be used to monitor um, the situation because a lot of what's going on with the blockchain is metrics development and ES and G metrics, of course, can also exist. This is typically one organization, although there's multiple organizations in every that could occur in any one of these steps here. Um, but this is just the general, what I would consider supply chain model. So let's go through this. Now, if we were to go through this, we would see when we look at some of the upstream stuff, this is some of the activities that the blockchain can um, control. You could track suppliers historical sustainability performance. This is an important aspect of ESG. Um, supplier performance, supplier management are dimensions that are critical to ESG. Some that I some that I've seen had to do with the carbon emissions, uh, scope one, scope two, scope three type carbon emissions. These can be captured and be more accurately developed using blockchain technology. There is a reliability, immutability issues, and that's only one example. Um, it also offers characteristics, as we mentioned, the removal of intermediaries to simplify the process. Um, uh, the, there's positive and negative ESG type situations there. Uh, supplier development, do they help suppliers, especially small suppliers? So it's not only a social, it's not only um, a business aspect, but could be a social aspect, especially vulnerable suppliers. Where are there vulnerable suppliers in the upstream and managing that? So for example, there might be measures contain, concerning, well, how do they help vulnerable suppliers? Now, this, these are measures that may or may not exist in the SNG. And this is one of the problems with the SNG, but these metrics could be determined and validated using the blockchain gathered and so on. Remember the how, what, why of blockchain technology can do a lot of this stuff when brought into play. Um, and a lot of this, of course, is gonna be fed by other technologies, which we'll get into very briefly later. Audit and performance um, and measure performance of supplier development programs is a big issue. So there, of course, how well do they actually do should be a disclosure element in ESG. Now, of course, there's many more items here. I can't go through every single one that'll go over my allotted time. So we'll move a little bit for uh, quickly through some of these. 
uh, warehousing, delivery of goods, incentivizing safe behavior and delivery goods. This is the business ethics aspect of this. So safety could be a measure that could be captured. How well are you performing throughout your supply chain? Um, and sustainability, of course, has the social issues. And safety um, is a big social issue, but it's also a governance uh, consideration as well. So this could be a performance metric in the governance area. Um, there's also multiple systems that currently exist. They, we have ISO 14000, we have life cycle analysis. Linking these with blockchain is another aspect of gathering performance and validating the performance, which can be used for ESG metrics. Um, verify sustainability performance of transportation, transportation issues, and these are more like carbon emissions type things, but you also have safety issues, road safety, community safety, noise pollution. If whatever metrics are being gathered to determine how effective your supply chain and the organization is in these activities is important to ESG. We also say uh, circular economy, as we mentioned, this is part of the reverse closing the loop. Can you trace locational materials and authenticate factors? Because some of the metrics that I've seen in ESG things are recycling based. What percentage of recycling is done? How much of your material is gathered? Yada, 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 et cetera. There's a lot of um, metrics that can be used at this level. The problem with using these metrics, and I've seen them in some of the ESNG databases, is that they're not existent, although they are wonderful measures to have because they're difficult to get. Blockchain can remove some of those barriers as well as other technologies that uh, when you can digitalize the supply chain. And of course, we have uh, different aspects of uh, customers buying it. Um, if, you, if you have, um, what is it, ethical products and responsibility, these can be managed. But also, this is the other aspect of blockchain that's not necessarily ESG related, but you can incentivize customers for buying sustainable products. So how many of your customers actually buy your sustainable products versus other products could be a great measure. If you can incentivize it, you can determine and provide how well you're doing. ESG metrics shouldn't just be about, you know, looking at the company and disclosing them, but helping companies improve themselves. This is a true for all performance measures as well. And of course, energy is a big issue throughout the supply chain, energy usage, et cetera. Um, whether it's uh, renewable energy, these again are different metrics that organizations can use. And finally, waste management is part of the circular economy, waste reduction, how much waste is generated, where is it generated, who's using it, all of these aspects can be um, measured as well and actually occur right now in um, the, like percentage recycled and so on and the waste and how much of it is uh, being recycled are potential measures that can be captured in this situation and validated. Now, as I have been mentioning, as I've talked here, um, that blockchain is one of the digital platform technologies. There's many emerging ones. I use the term industry 4.0, which has cyber, um, uh, cyber mixed cyber situations, um, human cyber physical situations is what I meant. Um, you have things like quantum computing, the Internet of Things. I kind of put them on this uh, graphic here. This is the source from another paper that we wrote. Um, that were that we've used to investigate these aspects and notice here at the very top of this uh, table are the different upstream as I've mentioned inter -organiza uh, internal organizational activities downstream supply chain management closing the loop activities these could all be categories within um, ESG and I show here what the internet of things can do and yeah, the internet of things is very valuable because it fits perfectly with the blockchain both as a use and as a device to gather information, to monitor information, um, even to probably to manipulate and do some decisions uh, wherever you are in the world. And I've seen many types of things, um, many types of activities that integrate the Internet of Things with blockchain technology. And um, because you could use these uh, smartphones and other um, devices to actually do consensus, public consensus. Crowdsourcing might be one way of doing this. And part of the crowdsourcing is you can gather data that way as well. 
This is again part of the validity and multi-stakeholder technological digitalization aspects that are important um, for these te the technologies. I list an emergent one here in quantum computing. And the reason why quantum computing is um, uh, really interesting is because of the number of transactions, the variety of transactions, both in the supply chain and across organizations, even within organizations, takes a lot of time and there's scalability concerns and how quickly things can be done. Quantum computing has changed the game by making transactions super efficient. Whether you use smart contracts, algorithms, big data, all of these things come into play um, are the type of technology or analytics that are uh, useful and quantum computing makes even a laptop computer faster than any supercomputer that ever existed. That is the promise. It's currently under development, um, and, but it's a technology you should be paying attention to as a digitalization technology because of the capability of processing speed. Now let's move over to ESG a little more spe uh, specifically and focused in on this topic. Um, this is from an article I started looking up, you know, ESG data, you know, how do you measure data? What do you, what do you do with the data, the digitalization and trying to figure out exactly how much has been done with digitalization and blockchain technology and ESG. And not surprisingly, since I've been working in this area for a while, there's been very few that have focused on ESG specifically, but still even um, when you expand that to general performance measures, the role of performance measurement in digitalization and supply chains and organization um, is even, it's still relatively sparse. And we even had a special issue on this topic um, of performance measurement and digitalization. And the idea that ESG um, exists as a performance set of performance metrics is there, but there's also lots of problems with it. So let's let's go over the problems. And this is just a review article related to things that are problematic with ESG. There's a variety of consistency of data and measures and how companies report them. We have seen that. I've already mentioned that some seeing this ESNG database that has these metrics and they keep adding metrics and some metrics aren't even gathered. They just add them on because it looks good in the system without them having it in the system. Um, there's a lack of transparency among the data providers. There's, uh, for example, this is a concern of uh, who creates them? Where do they get the data? Is there a validation? So again, these first two items, as we see as major concerns, can be addressed with digitalization technologies. There's uh, differences in um, how to go about filling in the gaps, how to go about um, addressing these concerns. And, 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 and the validation comes into play, reliability, transparency, sourcing, um, traceability. Notice the terms that are being used. And I, and I saw this and I said, oh, gee, look at all these. Blockchain is supposedly supporting a lot of these. Um, so the discrepancies also, the validity, the variety. Now, if you have standardization, if you have uh, evaluation, comparison, public comparison, even a discussion going back and forth, you can actually narrow down the uh, consistency issues with these ES and G metrics. Of course, then you have all these proprietary companies saying, oh, you know, ours is better than theirs. You have to differentiate in this market. So there's, there's an issue, of course. There's issues with all of, of any recommendations that we would make here or anywhere else. Um, so this is, again, going back and summarizing some of the stuff that I have already spoken about related to um, environmental, social goals, and so on. These are more standard sustainability metrics. Notice here that in the supply chain area, G is not really as discuss, discussed as much in the ESG framework. G is a separate thing where it's an organizational type of management and so on, not necessarily contributing to the betterment of society, but to manage that betterment type of thing. Although depending on how your definition is, G could be very different depending on um, the database, the definition that you use and so on. Um, so here we have different performance metrics. We have different instruments that we use as well. Uh, life cycle analysis, 
eco audits for environmental, social life cycle, social audits, social benchmarking, of course, the economic factors are there. Some of the concepts from a broader supply chain perspective, uh, design for the environment is critical for designing environmentally sound supply chains, for example. The SCORE framework is in uh, a, a professional society's uh, supply chain operations reference model framework, which has a number of steps, some of the steps that we've covered in our previous introduction of supply chain. You have the uh, different systems, social management systems, different um, standards. ISO has different standards. Also, if you look here at the integrative one at the bottom, you have the Global Reporting Initiative, which is getting closer to disclosure and ESG. This is when they start integrating them. Of course, what's missing in a lot of these integrated things is the governance aspect, at least from the supply chain. This is our, this source is from a supply chain literature source. Now, as I mentioned, there is some work related to ESG reporting and blockchain um, uh, my, uh, frameworks. And this is one example. There's not very many. I think there's a couple of them. Just to say that this work is very early on and it's e not even in a real, it's in a book, not, it's a book chapter rather than a peer reviewed journal article, for example. But now they're starting to think about what is the process to go about getting ESG data and reporting it. And they have the different aspects of um, the blockchain here. And some of them are not even mentioned here, as we've mentioned earlier. So there's a little bit more complexity or a little bit more, what I would say, nuances that could be brought in to do this ESG reporting, resulting in uh, certifications, analysis, reporting systems, um, improvement, uh, observation, stakeholder pressuring, stockholder, investor relationship management. All of these things can start to play a role with this quote unquote smart service. Um, and here is uh, another one. And this is one that's related to what would a broader system look like? Not just a reporting system, what is needed all the way through. And I, and I view this reference as a really nice reference in the sense that it really shows the many characterizations and factors that blockchain is only one of the plot platforms, um, the blockchain network, but it's de dependent on different uh, types of applications. And on the right hand side, you see multiple stakeholders, the multi stakeholder aspect. Another interesting thing are communication channels, the in Internet of Things. Not only are the communication channels to send things over, 5G, for example, is the latest, greatest um, communication system for telecommunications that also includes supplier and interorganizational information um, management that could be something that others can take advantage of, companies and so on. You have <coughs> sensors to gather the data, smart algorithms, and of course, as I mentioned, multiple stakeholders. So there's <coughs> lots of complexities and technologies here. So what have been my observations on the limited amount of research in ESG blockchain supply chain type of uh, research and uh, um, situations. First of all, uh, environmental measures, at least from the work that I've been working with um, related to the supply chain to performance metrics, um, sustainability, ESG are very much environmentally focused. Maybe it's my bias of being in this area and environmental, and that's my first uh, true love is green supply chain. But this is where Blockchain has worked mostly, and there's been a lot of development with performance measurement, which can feed into ESG. Now, the practice may be a bit different. The research is in this area. Uh, social measures are important. Did they have traceability, transparency, tokenization are all aspects of the blockchain that could gather information from a social measures perspective, the same type of thing with environmental measures. Sensors are very easily automated, a lot of types of environmental sensors, heat, temperature, so on, um, that can be brought into the system. That can be actually gathered very quickly um, and don't necessarily need a consensus, but stored in a way that everybody can agree upon them. <clears throat> now, the G portion, governance. As I've been talking about it, there's a lot. Of, these are definitions. Of what what is governance metrics? Is is a, is for me is a relatively ambiguous or vague um, concern. 
and may include governance risks, uh, business ethics, management, how much does the C CEOs get paid, board ownership and structure, financial uh, transparency. Now, blockchain can gather this, but a lot of this is available in different ways. Now, the validity of it, the reliability of it, and including it and having external ones um, is, is, is could be uh, something that blockchain can contribute to, but it's very early on. <coughs> Blockchain technology itself could be a governance measure if you think about it. If you say that we have a valid system, a blockchain publicly available valid system, and it's governing our whole supply chain and our organization, and you can trust our data, that is a governance mechanism. That is a measure. Do they have blockchain or don't they? So in a way, the blockchain itself could be a performance measure, which is kind of interesting um, in itself. Um, but one of the things that I did notice that a lot of them had responsibility and ethics, if you notice in this title here, they you can look at the ethics, corruption, counterfeit, um, those types of things can be gathered from blockchain data, although they're a little more intangible in some cases. So like social issues, and this is where, you know, is governance separate from social ethics, different than social? And this is where it becomes a little vague and there's overlaps and um, maybe you could use the same measures for multiple purposes. But governance clearly is the least uh, addressed measures within supply chain management when it comes to uh, measuring the performance of an organization. Okay, I also found uh, quickly to uh, summarize some of these things, some practice issues. There's different organizations that are starting to look at how you go about developing ESG. And this is very recent, like um, April or the summer of this past year, they're starting to do this. So ESG is starting very early on. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, there's um, an integrated platform that can be used and can be completely about ESG, a blockchain platform for all ESG. And I expect to see some of the providers, Bloomberg, um, MSCI and so on, to be starting to look at these more carefully and utilizing and integrating blockchain. For example, um, KPMG says, look at blockchain, give you real-time information. So instead of waiting for updates on a monthly or yearly basis, you can do uh, quick evaluations. And I put the here last thing, the due diligence issue in Europe, because in Europe, it is in some areas, France, and even Germany have passed laws that say, you are responsible for your whole supply chain. If you had real-time data to monitor, trace, transparent data, that is part of the s &G framework, you said, we are doing our due diligence, you should not find us, we're trying to identify problem players and do that. Having that transparency, es and at even the smallest company may be very interesting. There's a whole topic around this that, um, I've talked about or written about as well that many others have talked about. And this is something that's emerging later on. So some research questions. Again, I only have a couple minutes left here. Uh, will ESNG benefit from blockchain? What aspects can um, of the, a blockchain are most valuable? Can blockchain standardize ESNG? So what happens at a standardization level? Are some of these problems that have identified earlier going to be addressed? Will ESNG be more trusted or less trusted with blockchain? Can it be manipulable? Um, and, and, and what will the blockchain uh, ESNG providers do when standardization does come into play? Uh, what, which measures will predominate? And I'm mentioning so, so, social and environmental measures are going to be better. Um, can sensors, more objective sensors, predom help um, uh, some measures while others may not be as easily done? Will those predominate even though they may not be important? Uh, what about proof of stake, proof of work, consensus? How do you develop these mechanisms to prove that ESNG is done? Will there be industry differences, regional differences, product service differences in ESNG? Is it going to be just a corporation? Is it going to be supply chains? How do you go about doing that in this environment? So in summary, there's significant potential for blockchain and sustainable supply chain performance. The potential can expand into ESNG um, and include significant supply chain aspects as we talked about. Uh, the blockchain application is still in its infancy, especially with supply chain sustainability add additional complexities that keep it in its infancy and research is needed there. And there are significant research questions that exist. I only touched barely upon some of them. 
So these are issues, we go more depth and more discussion. I look forward to your questions. So thank you very much.